Welcome to the latest episode of What Did I Miss? Joining me today are two gurus. Um, I feel good in saying that. I also like calling people gurus. Uh, it's Amber Theo Harris and Michael Fabs Fabiano, and they are of uh, fantasy football, Sirius XM radio fame, and many other things that you guys do, and I've been watching all week, and Amber's been very busy. But that being said, I've done zero homework so far. I know I'm in your league, Fabs. I also have a league that I lost in last season. This is my first foray into preparing for my drafts. So no pressure with you guys, okay, at all. You're basically, I'm writing down everything you say. Um, first of all, how are you guys before we even get into this? Good. Doing good. Yeah. In your, yeah. In your dark keeping, room with uh, helmets? Keeping busy. Yeah, I got a lot of helmets. <laughs> yeah. a lot of, uh, it may be an obsession, kind of like uh, somebody I with know. a lot of shoes behind I her. know. I know. I know. Amber, where's your weird uh, fetish thing in the background? Like I know. I guess. She can't, well, she usually can't, it's my naked children. She can't children. post that publicly. Yeah, usually it's naked <laughs> children. So I figure that's enough of a backdrop. We don't, you know, because my bathroom's right back there. So That would have been know, awesome. They just run around in the back. They just come right out I'm, of the bath and run right through. So I don't want a helmet or shoes oh, to interrupt that scenery no. for everybody. No. <laughs> Can't have that. <laughs> Cannot have that. Um, I know we're about, you guys are in like your busy time as we, as we approach the season every day, it gets a little bit closer. And so I have probably what are going to sound like basic questions, but I know there are a bunch of people like me who are not pros at this at all. Um, so l I just want to start with your basic fantasy football draft strategy. Is there one that both of you adhere to, or is it very different? We're very well, different. Well, for me, I'm a running backs truther. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I'm a running oh. backs truther. A running uh, backs truther. I will focus on that position because if you wait, you will be sorry. <laughs> There's just not a lot of featured running backs in the league anymore. More and more teams are going to committees. And even some of the core, uh, the running backs that we think are going to be featured backs going into this year could end up finding themselves in committee, right? Like Josh Jacobs, who was a, a pretty good fantasy back last year. Josh McDaniels is there, right? I mean, the Patriots mm. backfield has been a headache for almost ever. And if he uses Amir White and, and Kenyon Drake and Amir Abdullah in that backfield rotation, that could be another guy that we lose from the uh, featured back list. But also keep in mind that wide receiver is really deep. There's a lot of good wide receivers, maybe more than ever before. So even if you go with two running backs in your first two picks, you're still going to be able to get some really good wide receivers. If you're in a 10-team league, you can go running back, running back, running back, then oh. go three wide receivers with your next three picks and still end up with some pretty good players at that position. Damn. Do you yeah. do the same thing? N no. Really? Me and Fabs are very <laughs> different. No, she doesn't. I don't. I that's, like, no, it's good. Uh, and that's, you know, I, what have I, how, I've beaten you twice out of the oh, last three years in the go. finals. Oh, okay. Oh, oh Fabs, no, I need you to shut up then. So <laughs> <laughs> Mute my mic. Mute my mic. Uh, um, no, so what I do is... And I think everybody does what I do to a, to a certain extent, but I'm a little bit more intuition based. So I don't make it, I don't sit there and make 8 million lists of here are my targets. I know who I like. I mean, I host fantasy shows, so I know off the top of my head, but I don't sit there and, you know, do the nerd alert. Like, Hey, I got to write all my little, <laughs> little things down. I'm, I, what are you saying about me? <laughs> well, what are you saying it's, about me? This feels I mean, personal. Star Wars. You are a nerd, <laughs> you know, Theo Harris. Star I mean, Wars, listen, Star Trek. You're, what else you're, do you no, like? You're, you're, you don't look like the traditional nerd, but you're a nerd. <laughs> I'm a She's a cool nerd. nerd. Yeah. <laughs> cool nerd. <laughs> I'm yeah, a yeah, total yeah. nerd. No. Um, so I, I, um, obviously do a lot of research because that's just like part of my job. You know, I naturally have to have that. But what I do is I, I, I tell people don't make it too hard. Like go for the mm -hmm. best player available. These these sites, these platforms that you are drafting on are high tech sites. They give you in your draft room, you know, you will see the best player available in every position. And yes, maybe you could say I want to go running back, running back. Um, and I do recommend if you have a really good running back on the board, especially if you're in the first, you know, six picks, you, you should go running back. Um, but Otherwise, you know, and I, and I always don't have enough running backs. So let me throw that out there. You know, my <laughs> Fabs is right. I always don't have enough running backs, but I feel like through trades and waiver wire, I can always get by. Um, I will hmm. sometimes go running back, running. I will never go running back, running back, running back. And also, I'm yeah, that's very, crazy. never, I will never do that. And I am, I'm very, very weary um, of running backs that are older and have injury history. That's the number one thing I stay away from. So while, while everybody is going for uh, Christian McCaffrey right now, 
I, I stay absolutely away from guys like that. Now, I might be wrong. I hope for his sake he has an awesome season and everything's amazing and those who chose him win their fantasy leagues. But for me, that's, <laughs> uh, that's too much risk, especially running backs who are injured stay injured. So that's my biggest advice when you're picking. If you're going to go running back, running back mm -hmm. right off the top, um, try not to go for running backs that have an injury history you know the Saquons the even Dalvin Cook to a certain extent I'm on the fence about him but you know he was banged up last year and he's he's getting miles on him like the Derrick Henrys I tend to stay away from now it all mm. depends on where you pick right so if you if it's where you're get, if he falls to you um you know and you're you're a little deeper into the first round then you go for it but if you have the top five top six picks I wouldn't I wouldn't go for Christian McCaffrey so t okay so fabs are you are you more forgiving on the injury front or no you're like no new season new start let's do this you know what they say no risk it no biscuit wow. so <laughs> do they <laughs> i will they they he do does. they do they say that beetle um if i am in the top five and mccaffrey falls to me at four or five i'm gonna take him okay uh, i i will make sure that i draft deonta foreman late just to make sure that i'm covered but I, I will take that risk. I, I never say never. There are certain players that there are red flags. Like Derrick sure. Henry's had a million carries in the last three years. And he got hurt last year. And it's not because he's not a durable guy. It's just that the more, the more touches you get, the greater chance you have as a football player, especially a running back, to get hurt no matter how big you might be. I mean, the hmm. dude's a freight train. But he hurt his foot last year. And you have to make sure that when you go after players like that, that you just ensure yourself at some point with running back depth with a handcuff. And for those who don't know what a handcuff is, it's not that freaks. Well, we know what it's a just making I mean, sure oh, sorry. that you draft me and the backup of the your, no, you guys of your number one running back. So for example, Alexander Madison for Dalvin cook, we project now Deonta Foreman for Christian McCaffrey, but we're not a hundred percent sure. And mm -hmm. that's just a way to, kind of cover your butt I and I get it people out there are risk adverse they don't want to do that and that's totally fine everybody's got to go by what philosophy they feel the most comfortable with but if a player falls to me because he's prone to injuries and suddenly he becomes a value yeah. I'm going to take a chance on that player and cross my fingers and hope that he avoids injuries and gives me the production like McCaffrey McCaffrey is like he, he's like that that guy that you know you shouldn't draft because he's been mostly hurt the last two years and then you look that he's averaged like over 28 points a game the last two years and the year before he was the best running back in fantasy football and you're like damn it I, I have to I, I, I have yeah, to but do if it he's not like, the on the he hasn't been on the great. field the last two he's years. like it's Anthony not... Davis yeah, it's, it's if, like right, yeah, in NBA yeah, right, translations. Right. Yeah, right. Like when no, he's yeah, great, exactly. he's great. Not yes. on the field. Yes, but yeah, but there. if they're not on the court or not on the field, then they're they're not going to help your fantasy team. So you can look like a Michael Thomas. You can look how great he was two years ago and say, oh, that would be awesome. But I'm not going to invest in somebody that in two years. Now, one year I might be a little bit more like, okay, it was one, in, it was an injury. Anybody can have an injury. But when it starts to be two years of injuries, that's where I get really, really nervous, and I try to stay away from them. But always look for a balanced roster. So as you keep it. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people, it's easy to draft off the top. You're, you're not going to miss often with your first, if you're in the top five. You're not going to miss with that pick. It's where you start to get lower. That's where I say, if you don't know, look look what you have. How many running backs do you have? How many wide receivers? Maybe this is a chance to go tight end now. Uh, maybe this is where I take the, the quarterback. So always look to balance out what you have. And then if you kind of have an equal amount of running backs and wide receivers, and you're in the middle rounds, go running back. Because that's where that depth is really going to help you. Go for the youngest, hmm. least injured running back, and it'll be right there on your queue. You don't have to do a lot of research no. the top running backs are going to be right there so. theo harris likes some young beetle yeah you know. who doesn't <laughs> <laughs> i gotta work on my that roar sounds good to me that was horrible i know that was <laughs> that was rough like a, but that's okay yeah, you're gonna get it it was like a cat it was like a kitty cat. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> there we go okay thank you thank you Beats. I, I well can i have a dumb question then so what is what is the feeling then on just if you're going to take best available anyways why can't i just auto draft Oh, because then you, you don't have like it's not it authentically balance. your team. Yeah, and it doesn't it's not balance authentically your roster. Your team. Yeah, exactly. because I it's mean, doing literally the so it, the earliest to get a quarterback should be when. 
me and Amber disagree on this. Okay. So I, if you're, if you're in a 12 team league and say Kyler or Lamar is on the board in round six or seven around the turn, then maybe I'll take one of those two guys. Okay. But typically I wait until after the eighth or ninth round because it's such a deep position. And again, we're talking about traditional one quarterback leagues. Tom Brady's 45. The guy's coming off a banana season. <laughs> if I could get him in the ninth round, great. Jalen Hurts, potential breakout candidate, uh, maybe even more so than last year. Eighth or ninth round. Okay. I love Trey Lance. I can get him in the double digit rounds. Derek yep. Carr. He's got his BFF from Fresno State, Devontae Adams in Las Vegas this year. I could get him in the double digit rounds. And so... I'd rather wait on that position again, unless like a Kyler or a Lamar falls to me. Although I want to be able to put in my fantasy contract with Kyler that he has to study film for (laughs) eight hours a week, not just four, because I know the other four hours he's playing video games. If I get that, then I maybe draft him even higher. (laughs) That's hilarious. Wait, so, okay. Okay. Yeah. Because I have Lamar, like we, we have, I have to do my keeper by a week from today. And I have no clue. I've never had, you know, this is all new. I will like, just oh. text me. I'll help you. All right. I'm going to screen grab my team and show you what I have. But I had Lamar last year. So I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, I don't know tough. what else to do. Yeah. So sleeper pick. This is where I'm whispering because I don't want people in the house to cheat on the sleeper <laughs> picks. Uh, who are we looking at? <laughs> Theo Harris, you got a few? You know, and then I can roll I, off a bunch. Okay. So oh, we, we differ a little bit with this. Um, so my, my number one slip, sleeper pick is Brandon Ayuk. And he told me it's Ayuk. It's not Ayuk. It's not Ayuk. It's Ayuk. 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 Oh, no I like why. that. Ayuk. Okay. Because um, I, I was just oh, at 49ers. Oh, there's no why. Okay. There's no why. Ayuk. Um, Ayuk. Okay. I was just at 49ers camp. And, you know, that's the beauty of going to some of these camps. You see those sleepers and, you're, and you get to talk to the quarterback or the coach. So you get an idea of how – how they're going to be used. And I know Kyle Shanahan is really high on him, but more importantly, he has the chemistry with Trey Lance because he and Trey were working out in Southern California while Debo was worried about his contract. So, <laughs> so Trey didn't really get to, to get that chemistry early with Debo and at camp. And I know we have to avoid, you know, picking camp heroes. It's different when every, you know, when the lights come on, but I know that they really like each other. They became really close friends and young quarterbacks always go for that safety blanket, that person that they like know it. that they've worked out with. So, Early on, I like Brandon Ayuk. I have to get used to saying it that way. I love that, though. I know. I, a little bit. Uh, so I like him a lot. Um, okay. I'm different from, I know I know Fabs is going to say Trey Lance, right, as kind of a sleeper quarterback. That's who I had last year. I was too so, early. <sighs> look, I, I love the kid. Uh, the difference I saw when I interviewed him last year at this time versus this year at this time is night and day and his confidence and his oh, wow. swag. When he walked in the room, he was like joking with everybody versus last year's eyes were down. So I, the awesome. confidence is there. But I also get to talk to everybody around there. It's still a work in progress. Like it's not going to be this like – Hugh, you know, weeks one through five, he's going to win your fantasy team. Uh, in a two quarterback league or a super flex, I absolutely love Trey Lance as my second quarterback. I'm not going to go with, I'm not going to go with Trey Lance as my as my first quarterback in a traditional redraft. What about you, Fabs? Okay. Hmm. Huh. There's just a lot Trey of growing. Like he he has to like get Trey that Lance... chemistry accuracy. There's a bunch of things that we'll we'll look for early on that he just doesn't necessarily have right now. Doesn't mean he won't. Just won't have right now. That's fair. Trey Lance won't be drafted as a QB1 in most leagues. He'll be a high two if you're in a 10 or 12 team league. I will say this. When you can run with a football as a quarterback, that will uh, cover up some of your deficiencies as a passer. And I will bring up Tim Tebow, who threw the football maybe uglier than anybody in the last two (laughs) decades. But because he could run with the ball, he had fantasy value. And he was actually a relevant QB starter in fantasy because he ran with the ball. I remember there was a game, I think it was against the Jets, maybe like on a Thursday night, and he threw some of the ugliest passes you ever saw in your life. But in the fourth quarter, I think he scored like 12 points, ended up with about 18 that week, and was good because he can run with the ball because it's easier to accumulate points as a runner based on the scoring system in most leagues than it is as a passer. Hmm. So, And Lance, I think, is more of a breakout type. I, I'm, I'm OCD with like my sleeper definition. At this point, I don't know if there's any real sleepers. Derek Carr's not a traditional sleeper, but you can get him at a double-digit round price, and he could outplay his draft position. Travis Etienne, I don't think he's a sleeper. He's more of a breakout, but I love the talent. A.J. Dillon, not so much of a sleeper, 
but potentially a breakout in Green Bay, they're going to run the ball a little bit more. Like a sleeper to me would be like Isaiah Pacheco in Kansas City, who all of a sudden people are talking about as maybe being the number two back behind Clyde edwards helaire and that guy's been made of glass for the last couple of years, you know, his yeah. first two years in the league. Tyler Algier, you know, uh, Rashad White, Daryl Williams uh, in Arizona, those guys check the box for sleeper. Uh, wide receivers like Alan Isaiah. Lazard. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Isaiah McKenzie is kind of one of those guys, right? He's like, yes, middle, yes, a hundred percent for wide receiver, hundred percent. Yeah, sorry, no doubt. Jalen Tolbert ahead. of my beloved Dallas Cowboys, because <laughs> he, he, he's going to start games. Uh, Elijah Moore, Gabe Davis uh, are are some more sleeper types and tight end. Like that position is full of sleepers. There's not really a ton of guys out there that like, oh, I know what I'm getting. There's a cliff after you get past like Goddard and Ertz. It's like Cole Komet, I really like this year. Uh, Austin Hooper, Irv Smith Jr., uh, Albert Okawebanam, only because I can pronounce his name correctly. That's after just fun to say. Yeah. Practicing, uh, <laughs> you know, just endlessly uh, earlier in the offseason. So you can get some pretty good value at tight end. And tight end's a position where I'm, I will never get Kelsey. I will never get Andrews because I'm not taking a tight end that high. I just don't want to do it. Right. I'll wait I will. and get Schultz. See, I will in the go get him round. on Andrews. Right. Right. You well, will. You're, okay. a, you're a Ravens honk. That's why. No, I mean, it's not just that. Like, I'm not going to emotionally pick. It's I mean, he it. was tight end number one. I think there'll be regression yep. this year. But mm-hmm. why Why wouldn't you? If, if Lamar Jackson's healthy, that's his number one target. So yeah, I just, that's his I, number one receiver. I'd rather load receiver. up on the running backs and wideouts. That's just what I that, – that's personally just what I do. I always – I remember I remember one year when Rob Gronkowski was, like, at the height of his fantasy value. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take Gronkowski at the end of the first round. What the hell? Let's get nuts, right? Like Michael <laughs> Keaton said in Batman, let's get nuts. And that team sucked, and I hated it And I, and because, because my running backs were garbage. I'm like, God darn it. I, this is why I don't do it. So I just I don't do it. I, I don't, if Kelsey is there like at the end of the second round and he's a great value, I'm not taking him because inevitably I hate my running backs and wide receivers, and it drives me nuts the rest of the season. And then I end up trading the guy anyways. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. All right. By the way, I just wrote every, there's no way I'm going to be able to read any of this uh, even 10 minutes from now, which is going to be fantastic. Okay, we're going to take a quick break because when we come back in a perfect world, we're going to build my perfect team because I'm assuming it'll go exactly like this in my league. Yep. So okay, we'll it will. be right back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> let's just say I think I, I think I go fifth in my picks in one of my leagues. Let's build it. Let's just build the perfect team. But I don't want to start in the order. Like, I'm not going to start with quarterback because that's obviously not going to be my first. So we can start wherever you guys want. If you want to start with running back, let's do that. This theoretically. is traditional to start? redraft. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, I am. So running back. I, Hold I, on. I, Let me pull up my rankings. I didn't even have them. Oh, I'm, going, I'm going with a running back. And at five, you're probably looking at Najee uh, uh, or Austin Eckler. I mean, it really depends on who the who the teams ahead of you favor right if, if they're going to running backs and you're going it's going to go taylor mccaffrey you know good eckler good. henry like in, in in that kind of order and then you may end up getting Najee there and at five i'll take Najee all day long okay that was okay. my first i like that yeah I, i'm with that because that I was your oh that was actually my first uh choice like i think if Najee's there that's because he's one of my he's probably Austin Eckler in here are my two top running backs. I mean, Jonathan Taylor is going to go number one. So after Jonathan Taylor. So if Najee is there, I would take him. Um, but mm. I also, I know you, like running back, running back, everybody says. But if Justin Jefferson is there or Cooper Cup at five, I mm. I, I mean, might take yeah. them. Um, and after what See, I See, I, I, that would make sense okay. to me. Yeah, like I know, after I would what do I that, saw I yesterday, I was, you know, I just saw Justin Jefferson warming up. You know, Kirk Cousins was out yesterday at the Vikings Raiders preseason game, um, but I was just watching him run routes. And Justin Jefferson's unbelievable in Kevin O'Connell's offense, and he's super excited about it. I, I Justin <laughs> Jefferson, I got super excited about. So if he's there, I might look at him. Just how excited were you, Amber? Super, <laughs> super, super. I like. Wait, I hear footsteps. You sounded like you're from Los Angeles, <gasps> oh, like oh Valley Girl Wait. type. Super. I, I hope everybody's Uh-oh. clothed. What kids? Out. Kids, kids. Oh, oh there kids, they are. They <laughs> like, hey, what's going no, on here, guys? No, can't, I can't take you surfing right now. <laughs> Bye. See, this is but this is what I, I love. This is surfing. what I love. I work with some of the most amazing female <laughs> analysts in in. The National Football League and otherwise. Yep. I, uh, uh, they're awesome. 
and their kids are crawling all over them, whether it's Amber or Lindsay Rhodes. They're crawling all over them. They want in and out. They want to go surfing. They want to know. They want to know when they're getting their PBJ. Yeah. You guys are they, awesome. They, thank you. Yeah, you guys have to do like nine jobs. <laughs> yeah, they don't care. The best part of it, like literally kids, are, like they don't care what you do for a living. Like, hey, I'm on live TV. No. They don't care. They'll walk up and ask, you know. That makes why, no sense to them. Yeah. Can they buy more ro- road bucks for Roadblox game? I'm like, I'm, I'm <laughs> Ro- on TV. Roadblox? Like, or, I'm I know, actually yeah. on right. TV right now. You know, Doesn't matter. Don't care. No, it's not important. They're Is not it cool TV? No, it's not. So they don't care. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, it's not YouTube. <laughs> They don't care. That, that doesn't matter. <laughs> sorry I love, about yeah, I know that. they have to do. Yeah, sorry. You're learning, Fabs. Uh, mothers have to do nine times the work. <laughs> oh, I, trust me. But I I'm know. with you. I, I wouldn't know. I, I've worked with <laughs> all of all of the amazing women that I've worked with. I, I trust me. I know. I, I was talking to Aditi Kigawala earlier in the day, and she, you know, she's got you know dealing. She's got a couple of kids that she's trying to figure things out. Oh, it's they were and, out there at Browns and, camp and running routes. I saw her little girl out there yes. at Browns camp doing like the obstacle I know. Uh, hitting, hitting pads. That's crazy. Was awesome. Yeah. So sorry like, about that. Admirable. Back to fantasy. It, you got to be exhausted. Okay. Yeah. I'm I mean, sorry. I, yes, I'm, 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 okay. I've been exhausted since 2010. Go ahead. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, do I keep Lamar Jackson? Like, do I, is it worth, or do I not bother keeping him? Like how, what do I, off, I've not had to do that. It before. depends. Do, do you round? lose the round yeah. of the, of, uh, of the uh, yes. in the previous draft. So where did you draft him last season? Oh, that's a great question. I don't even. Yeah, know. that's probably something you should know. You lose the pick in that round, so that you got to think yeah. about like, what you could get in that round, and is it worth it? If I, and also, I mean, like, knowing it's, me, hmm, it's a I'd traditional league. I'm try. guessing it's not a super flex league. It's not yeah. a, Q, a two QB league. I also need to know what your other options are too. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to send this to you. It's just very difficult. I like keeping Lamar difficult. Jackson because if you already have him, then your quarterback's taken care of. And I'm and I imagine you got him maybe in the like I would guess like seventh or eighth. I would just guess. I would hope. Yeah. So yeah. so you might lose that pick where is it's kind of where you would take a quarterback again anyway. So depends on exactly. where you exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so that, why not? That's going to be my big maybe. Okay. I, what about? You see, these are the ones that don't get enough credit, and I do sometimes think like it's sneaky. But kickers and defense. <laughs> what <laughs> so, do you do? The last just yeah. on your mind. The last thought. Isn't that, that so right? rude? It's yeah. so rude. It is. And and kickers God. are being eliminated from fantasy football. It's so rude. In, in some <laughs> leagues. One of my That's pals, Jake Seeley, who just got engaged, congratulations. He, like, he hates kickers. He doesn't have kickers in his league. <laughs> For me, not it's only brutal. do I have kickers who are friends that are in the league and have been re- uh, retired, but how the hell do you call it football without kickers? Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, thing. I don't know how you, how you do that. I'm traditional. I've been doing this for a long time. I like having kickers. I like, hell, Nick Folk was awesome for me last year. Like, Matt Stover has won people fantasy championships. Like, okay. Uh, the the position is a little bit less predictable, Evan but McPherson I mean, is everything's somebody unpredictable I would love in the National have. Football League. Yeah. See? Kickers so can will, win a game. Why can't I they like win your defense. fantasy It's game? important. They should be on your team. Yeah. I like kickers and defenses because I but like it to wait. mirror real football. So if if a field goal can win a game in real football, I I would like to see those points help you win your fantasy uh, team. So I like that. I like Agreed. it. Agreed. But it should be your last. Yeah, we're not going to answer on your kickers. question. Yeah, you can get last kickers. Two Don't do that first. Yeah, last two rounds. Right. Right. Take a oh, kicker first. first. Last. God, what if I just did? Awful. And, and defenses. You just stream defenses. You just, I just all in and week. Out yeah, I mean all year. Week. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The, the first year that I created, like you know, a celebrity fantasy football league was back when I was at CBS, and we actually held the draft live in one of the studios there in New York. It was like, I'm going to name drop. It's fine. Uh, Jim Nance, Brent Jones, Randy Cross, Gus Johnson, Bonnie Bernstein, Bill Sims, Dan Marino, Boomer Sison, Steve Taft. There's a bunch of us. And Marino drafted Mike Vanderjat in the fourth round. And everybody in the room was like, now Dan was doing it via phone. And we were like, that's (laughs) the pick of a guy who hasn't played fantasy football. Should you tell him? Should I? And I guarantee Dan never did that again. You, you just wait on kickers. You a lot of times Aww. if you don't get like a Tucker, a Butker, or something like that. I kind of just rhymed there. You'll hey, get yeah. a guy off the waiver wire who's pretty good. Like Nick Folk was awesome last year, and you got him off the wire in a lot of leagues. Yeah. Okay. So that's um. I mean, Dan Marino. I just kind of love that so much. Aww. He's like, oh, I was busy playing real football. Yeah. I don't know what you guys nerds. Dan are is awesome. About. <laughs> I, I, Dan was cool. I actually was lucky enough to be in the green room. When Dan Boomer and a couple of the other guys were watching Peyton Manning break Dan's uh, record for oh. touchdown passes, and Dan couldn't have been more gracious. It was uh, it was very cool. Dan Marino. Now, knows did you the believe value. him? 
I don't know. Yeah. I guess, I, he seemed believable. He seemed he okay. seemed to be pretty happy, genuinely, for Peyton. Dan Marino God, knows what the value of a kicker, by the way. Lace is out. Remember that? Yeah. I mean, remember yeah, what happened exactly. to him in Ace Ventura? So he, he, That's yeah. true. a great kicker is Finkel. 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 Great <laughs> Finkel. Lace is That's out. Right. Oh, man. Okay. I know we have a little bit of time left. We'll take a quick break because we. this is when we come back, it's the thing that I. I'm luckily I haven't had to do this yet, but we'll be back. So to me, fantasy football, and I've, I've been watching it via social media forever because I've never experienced the loser punishment side. Of fantasy football and the creativity that has has come through on all of that what is the best slash worst i think that's really one and the same that you guys have seen or heard of fabs oh my god go fabs you've, you've seen I a can't lot say more it on... than me what what do you mean you can't say it what does it have to do with nudity <laughs> murder I know. is it murder can... tell me if it's I know. murder like, no it's not it? it's you not no no no, no. it's it... I know, bro, you have to kill someone. <laughs> Sorry, I'm it, 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 I mean, it, it, like, it, it involves it, it involves running around with very few clothes on. Yes. Um, with a sign around your neck that says "I suck at fantasy football," <laughs> stuff like that. I've actually, I've had, I've done this twice. I did it with Scott Hansen one time. He had to hold a sign after I beat him in front of the old NFL Network building that said, oh. "You know, Fabs beat me in fantasy football." Uh, I did it to Mizanin too. This was oh. although that snake and I love Mike. He's like a brother. But I made a bet with him. We had we were playing each other twice in the same week, and I said if I beat you in both of these matchups, you have to hold up a sign that says that uh, Fabs is my daddy in fantasy football. <laughs> and yeah, you know what he sad. did? And you you know Mike too, Beetle. Oh, you know what no. he did? What? He wrote it on a piece of paper in such small letters that you couldn't <laughs> read it. Brilliant. And you didn't specify. It. You didn't specify. That's I on know, you. I know. Yeah, so yeah, I should have. So, it. like, stuff like that. Or, you know, you, you've got to wear women's clothing and stand outside of your day. neighborhood. And I, there, there's, a lot of, there, there's a lot of stuff like that going on. But I think um, tattoos is, like, legit. Yeah, see, I, that's do you want to get a tattoo? Something that's on your body that says, I suck at fantasy football and have that for the rest of your life. But I, I, I mean, somebody I the tattoos I have are pretty bad. We'll so do it. Probably. <laughs> I right, like, the, like, like well, it's not even scene. that. Like, have you seen that one? Ooh. I think that's fun and harmless. Like, a guy has to get his ear pierced, and he's like forty-five and has four kids. <laughs> it's like a midlife like, crisis. I got my ear pierced when I was like, like eighteen. Guy. Yeah, the see, I had, I had the silver loops. I, I, oh, I was trying to like get no. girls. Wait, two of them? The yeah. No, just one in each. Year. Oh, I was yeah, like, not not multiple. Yeah. He was probably oh, definitely wow, like goodness. a conch shell necklace, like frosted mm-hmm. tip kind no, of. No, 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 no. The frosted tips I did have. See, I yeah. did have, I had we the frosted tips. You did have the frosted tips. Earrings. I had no the, conch shell I necklace. Had the, I had the tight you were in Florida, right? necklace with a cross oh. on it. That's what I had. <laughs> okay, okay. You know what? That was that was going to be a second guess. That's yeah. not bad. There's one like, wait, have you heard of any Amber that you just thought were okay? That's off limits or brilliant. Well, the tat the tattoo is um is off limits for me. Um, I always like the you know you have to take a picture and we we me and Fabs have done this in a in another team's jersey that they hate. So he still hasn't worn a Cal Ripken jersey because I'm Orioles and he's I'm Yankees. Waiting. I, oh, I, really? I gotta buy the jersey. So he needs yeah, to like post one? a picture that says Go O's. But I uh, I beat James Jones <laughs> a couple years ago the former uh, wide receiver and he wore a Lamar Jackson jersey in the middle of the That's mall awesome. uh, and had to say like I love the Ravens and all this so that's <laughs> like that's that's totally fun but I've also seen um, I saw one where his like whatever flight the guy took when he came back home to the airport all of his friends were there with signs that said welcome back welcome back from prison like at the that's airport. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like way yes. to get out buddy like that kind of stuff. I think it's really funny too. <laughs> People are smart it's, it's and weirdly creative. Yes. It's so been a, a yeah. The, I saw the one, somebody had to spend 24 hours at a waffle house. Yes. That yes. one I like. Because then you get to eat one. waffles to, to minimize how many hours you're there, which I don't feel like is a loss. I this doesn't that. feel yeah, like a How many waffles waffle can you house? eat, Beetle? Like, like I mean, 20? I don't know how big are these waffles. They're like the normal. 20 waffles? If, if it means I only have to sit in a waffle house for four hours, yeah, I'll you make myself you, eat 20. You know where you're going to be sitting for the other 20 hours <laughs> of that 24 hours. Back, back and forth. Back and forth. And it's not going to be pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The people watching at a waffle house, especially in the late night hours, it, it's worth it. I actually think it'd be, it'd be not, <laughs> not bad to actually have to do that. Yeah, so for me, I, I, I don't know. I go to tattoo all the time, but I just think because I think tattoos are funny. And it doesn't have to say I suck. It could just be like the logo of the team you hate the most would actually be a pretty good one. 
You have to Honestly. have the name. You have to put the name of the person that beat you. Like that would oh, be hilarious with like that's a heart. A good one. T- I would have like <gasps> my, like Fabs and a heart. Oh my god! I actually awesome. want to do that now. That'd be See, awesome. I'm telling you, most people because you can hide the tattoo, so you don't mm-hmm. have to put it visibly unless you know you make that a specific. Uh, but that's kind of rude if you do it that way, dude. <laughs> I love this. I'm. I feel like I don't think I, your husband would like you to have a, a tattoo <laughs> of my well, name with a heart. What if it's your husband that beats you? Oh, that's going to suck too. Now it's like back to square one. I love this because moving back to Texas, I feel like people, they assume that I'm getting all of my information from experts like you guys. And I love proving them right. Yes, I am. I'm getting my entire team (laughs) drafted from you guys. So I have to win. I have to win. Um, I appreciate your time, guys. I know you guys are super busy, especially right now. So Fabs, Amber, um, do you want to plug anything? I know that I'm supposed to do that at the end of these podcasts. It's so weird to do, isn't it? Yeah. Do you want to uh, plug stuff? You, you want to start ladies first, Amber. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can, let's start. You can catch Fabs and myself. Uh, he, uh, Fantasy Dirt every Monday through Friday, 2 to 4 p.m. Mm-hmm. Eastern on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio. Um, you can catch me over on NFL Radio. Uh, Fabs is doing everything with Sports Illustrated. Check out his columns, si.com. He's always up if you want the best fantasy advice. What else you have, Fabs? Fantasy I don't football we all have, like, forecast on jobs. Westwood One. Yes, <laughs> like, I know. On. Guys are yeah. insane. Catch us on uh, yeah, Westwood One. We have fantasy forecasts that's going to run throughout all the weekends. Um, yeah, every every weekend. And season. what else do we have? I have got the amazing ladies. Including yes. the two on the air with me right now who are in my ladies only league. We will be drafting, <laughs> I think, the last week of August. I'm tr- still trying to lock down uh, one last uh, member of the team. <laughs> Trophy Smack is donating $3,000 to charity for the winner. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I'll also be doing my Fabiano Invitational Celebrity League. Uh, that will probably be going down the first week of September. And that includes a whole lot of great folks. Sling TV is sponsoring it they're giving a whole boatload of money to charity that's going to be a lot of fun and just you know amber is going to be everywhere by the way i mean by the way everywhere how many leagues are you in amber like like a given year i think no i'm on i'm not i'm not like fabs i'm in like four so okay yeah what fabs what are you Oh my god! Oh my god! So fourteen oh in, in leagues where I have to actually set a lineup and make moves every week, it's probably about fourteen. And then best. And then oh I have like another maybe twenty best ball leagues that I just draft and I don't really pay attention to afterwards until the end of the season. Oh. But yeah, four about fourteen. And I'm always trying to cut back too. I can never do it. I get dragged in to doing other things. I love doing the charity stuff. Yeah. So anytime I get a chance to do something for charity, I typically will will say, okay, I'll do that. But 14? I, 14 is a lot. I just it's, got like tears of anxiety from that. 14 is a lot you know what, of though? stuff. Michelle, I have friends who do like double that and more. That's crazy. I don't oh know. They're, they're not married. They, they live in their mom's basements, but they do. <laughs> but they do Star Trek, like 30 as I said in the beginning. <laughs> that is OK. That is impressive. Um, I have a long, long way to go. Guys, I appreciate it. If, if you guys want to chime in, by the way, three, uh, 631-397-0403, tell us how many leagues you're in because I'm always fascinated. I, I know Anita Marks does like 97 leagues in all the sports because she's yeah. psychotic. But um, yeah, rate, review, YouTube, all that stuff. Guys, I look forward to listening to you continue on. Amber, I hope you got that scooter from Debo. And if not, CAA <laughs> owes you one. Uh, and, and they got money. CAA's got money. Uh, know, guys, like, thank up? you so much. I, I know. I appreciate it. Good luck in all of it. But Thanks, not you, Michelle. Amber. We not appreciate it. Only. <laughs>